So in this video and briefly the other videos that would be coming up, I want to talk about decorators in TypeScript and how they might be useful. So I would like to divide these videos into sort of chunks that might be small to digest and we will be getting advanced stuff like for example metadata programming so that we can also get into decorator metadata and all that sort of stuff. Now if you are coming from one of my previous video where I actually implemented decorators in one of the applications that we use to create a modern backend server, I would also suggest you to check that out. However, the uh, you could say the explanation of decorators that I did there was kind of shitty so I don't really approve of it. So I thought why not create a new video of explaining decorators and how they work in general. So this video is about that. Right now I'm on my desktop and I just start creating a new directory. I'll call it TS Decorators. I've been creating this tutorial for a while so I do have that folder name saved up. So let's head into the directory, that TS Decorators directory and I'll just open up my code editor here. All right, now that we have that, I'm actually going to create a new file here. Uh, that file should be inside of source and it should be index.ts. Now you don't, you can't really start by directly by using index.ts or in just simply this uh, TypeScript file because it just won't work. So what we're going to do is that we're going to install a few packages and to install a few packages, we're going to use npm. So let's just do a npm init hyphen y so that we can quickly get a project up and running. And I forgot the space. Now that we have that, I'll just do an npm i hyphen d. Now instead of using npm, I'm going to use, okay, let's just go with npm. So we're going to install a few stuff and this, this, are, this is going to be quite simple. We're just going to need TypeScript because we actually need it to compile our code. Now right here, I'm going to do a tsc hyphen hyphen init to initialize the TypeScript file. Now we need to do a bit of uh, moving around in this TypeScript file so that we can actually enable decorators because TypeScript by default does not enable them. And just in case you don't know, uh, decorators are still in experimental stage because they are yet uh, to be implemented in JavaScript. So JavaScript right now don't have decorators in real, like really right now, but they, it can be done in JavaScript as well. But we're talking about TypeScript decorator for now. So in the TS config compiler options, you're going to see two things, experimental decorators and emit decorator metadata. So we're just going to comment these out, or, like, or should I say, uncomment them so that these two gets that these two get uh, enabled. All right. So just to give it a double check, let's go ahead inside of our package.json file and see what we can do here. So I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to say start. Uh, so we're not going to do sort of a development server, but this is going to be quite simple. So I'm just going to use TS node and I'm actually going to run stuff inside source and it's going to be index.ts like that. So again, we need to install TS node. So now that we have TS node installed, this is what is going to run the TypeScript file directly. So even if I was to come in here and let's just try to do something uh, like something that is uh, TypeScripty. So let's go ahead and do a npm start and I expect to see this works. So this code works, nothing really special here. So let's just go ahead and do something. So TypeScript majorly revolves around classes because TypeScript majorly like helps you mainly when you have something that goes classes with. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a class and let's create a basic person class. Uh, we're not going to assign any uh, constructor to it. We're just going to assign a property and let's call this, let's say public name and make sure the type of it is string and it should, it, it's just say is John. Then we also have a method here and it's going to be say hi. So say hi is actually a method on class. So all it does is just logs a few things about the object that it is. So I'm going to say this dot name says hi. So if I was to call in this function, it's probably going to work if and if, if and only if I was to create an instance out of this. Now, let's talk about decorators and essentially what they are. Now in TypeScript, decorators are actually functions that can that can wrap around stuff. So by that, I mean methods, decorator properties, uh, the class properties, class declarations and all that sort of stuff. So that's what we're going to use. So let's come down here and create a new function and let's call it. Um, let's go with logger. Seems a good plausible function to me. And let's just say that this logger does also just simply logs the stuff. So let's say it logs. 
this is a decorator like that now let's come up top and see how to use this decorator if i come here and do it at sign you'll automatically see a logger comes up and if i do that and if i call it like or maybe just leave it like this this is how we're going to call it but you're going to see an error so if i hover over it it says that logger accepts too few arguments to be used as a decorator here did you mean to call it first and write like this no we used we mean to call it like this we really wanted to call it like this however it says that it doesn't ex accept or should, should i say accepts uh arguments so there are arguments that this thing accepts so let's pass them in the first one is the target for now let's keep it any i know you might wonder wait why why are we keeping it any but just bear with me for a while the other thing that this accepts is the key and it's a type string and now you see the property or the error has automatically gone away so let's see what happens so if i was to do an npub start again you will see that that thing is actually firing this is a decorator now looking at this there's one crucial thing that i want you to know or i want you to understand and keep in your mind that nowhere in our code i have actually instantiated this class just have a look nowhere in our code i have created a new instance of this class however this code actually ran and why was that well the thing is decorators don't work uh actually when you create an instance they rather work whenever this class is declared so when this code is actually found and whenever this class declaration came up so that compiler just went through or should i say the interpreter just went through and saw this logger should i say the uh, decorator and immediately executed it so you won't see anything like this so if i say const new person equals new person like this uh, it doesn't really matter the logger will automatically execute whenever it finds this declaration so that's said and done uh, let's see what what's inside of this target and this key so i'm just gonna get rid of this log and i'm just gonna do another log and i'm gonna log in target and i'm gonna just do another log and just log in key let's see again so we're gonna do an npm start and we get an empty object and say hi so let me just uh maybe do like this so that they are easily recognizable because there's something we want to talk about here and it's it's sort of really complicated all right now we have the target and key now if i execute it one more time you will see that i get an empty object and a key saying say hi so let's talk about the key first because the target thing is actually something that uh, i want to go into detail the key is actually whatever you put this logger above so say for example i i put this logger right above here so now the key would be, uh, what, what do you think the key would be? The key would be name, right? So if I do that, you'll see the key is name. So whatever uh, methods you have, whatever properties you have, they generally show up here. That's one thing, but let's talk about the target. What exactly is this target? And why was it empty first of all? So to talk about the target, this target is actually the prototype of the of the this method so not of this method but the class of wherever it was applied so for example this logger was applied to this class inside this class to a method of that class so the logger will actually have the target as person dot prototype so now you might be thinking wait doesn't prototype show up the all the methods inside of it then yeah it used to but now prototypes actually are not enumerable therefore you can't really see what's inside of them so that enumerability is lost. However, we can see actually what's inside of it by doing a simple little trick and actually trying to get something out of it. So if I was to do console.log and I'll say object.get own property names. And now, if you just in case you don't know what this does, it, it's just used to like get all the properties that are present inside of an object. So now what we can do is to, I'm just simply gonna get rid of, rid of that. And I'm actually going to come in here and make sure that this is target like that. So now if I was to do an NPM start, you will see, we see you'll see you're going to see a constructor and a say hi in there. So we see a constructor because by default, a class will forever create an empty, con empty constructor. However, it does have a say hi property and that is what the, the target is. So how about we look this code, uh, this entire code compiled to JavaScript? let's come in here you can actually go ahead and use tsc in your terminal but i'm going to use the npm script so let's just do a compile script and all we're going to do is just tsc like that ah before i go ahead i'm just going to go into ts config and i'm actually going to change a bit of stuff so i'm just going to say that base url actually is source and we're going to change the 
actually not base URL, that's dumb of me. Uh, the root directory is actually source and the output directory is going to be, uh, let's say just, oops. So let's open up our terminal and do an npm run compile. And once I do that, you'll actually see we have a disk folder. Inside of it, we have an index.js file. So let's see what's inside of this file. For now, ignore everything else, but just have a look at it. So right now you will see that the person has automatically created a constructor. This constructor has been automatically created by the person class. So this is what JavaScript does behind the scene for you. Whenever you don't define a constructor, the constructor will automatically be defined for that very class. Then again, we have a logger or our decorated logger, which is nothing but simply a function. However, you will see that there's something special here and that is that's this underscore underscore decorate. And I can prove it to you that this is actually the decorator. So if I come in here, get rid of that and save it. So I'm just getting rid of the decorator, not the function because the function doesn't really mean nothing. So I'm just gonna get rid of this, this folder as well. And I'm gonna do a run compile one more time. And if I come and see, you will see there's no more anything that says decorate. The logger has been commented out. So let's see what, what actually is in that logger, what actually that decorator stuff actually do. So let's just do a compile one more time and come inside of this index.js. You'll actually see that this decorator function has three arguments, the person.prototype, the say hi, that as you saw, I told you that whenever this class is created, this, this thing is automatically created. So that's why this is hard coded right now. So that's the only reason it's hard coded, by the way. And there's this third property. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it right now. It's called something called a property descriptor, but I do think I'm gonna come into it in a bit more, uh, in a bit more time. But you can see what essentially what this decorator thing is trying to do. Is that it's, it's just simply uh, like if you get rid of this uh, reflect metadata sort of stuff, all it is trying to do, as you can see right here, that it's trying to just take property one by one and call them onto that particular thing. So this logger is actually nothing but a function that is being called on this very thing. So all it does is that calls the logger and puts the target and the key inside of it. So that's it. That's all this decorator is trying to do. Now I can actually prove it to you. If I go in here and let's just say, I'll just copy this and, oops, and I'm going to say another logger. And if I was to do something like this, and if I say npm run compile, and if I come to into, into the index.js file, you'll actually see that that another logger came up in here. So it's nothing. It's just taking the array and then calling them one by one on this very particular property. And that very particular property is the prototype of the person which contains the say hi key. So essentially that is what these decorators try to do. So let's just get rid of this one. We don't need it. Okay, now you might be wondering where might we use these decorators? I mean, are they really sort of that important stuff? But no, they are actually not that important. You can create applications without decorators, but having something in your arsenal, something like this can actually give you a lot of, like a lot of things. But let's just talk about something else. And that is factory decorators. So let's just say that I actually want to pass some arguments like this. So I actually want to pass something in here, but actually you can see if I do that, it automatically gives an error. And the error says that unable to resolve signature of method decorator calls as an expression. The reason for that is that target and key are actually given by default to this, which means we can't actually pass them. If, if we were to, then we have to essentially parse them like this. So I'm gonna say person.prototype and then say hi like that but that still won't go away, right? So what we can do? Well, the thing is that there's something called the, uh, should I say decorator prototype, not prototypes, but decorator factories that actually works similarly how you curry a function. So if you have not heard about currying, I would really suggest you to check this thing out. It's called curry. Curry, yeah, to curry a function. That's what we're exactly gonna do. So I'm just gonna create a new function. And uh, I'm gonna say, let's just uh, take this name as well. So I'm gonna say logger and all it does is that it returns this function like that. Now this logger can actually take stuff. So I could say like, uh, let's just say name or maybe age, that's a type number. So now if you can see the logger is actually asking for an argument. So if I do like this and if I pass in 21, the error goes away. And now you can actually pass in numbers in there. 
So now I can come in here. Thanks to the power of closures, this age is still accessible to me. So do remember that this thing is actually a closure. So this function actually returned already, but this age variable is still accessible. Now you might be thinking, wait, isn't that gonna cause a bit of pain for the GC? Well, no, that's not gonna cause too much of a pain. It's still simple. We use closures all the time. So if I do a npm run compile, you'll actually see the code that we generated is pretty much the same, only that the logger is now essentially passing in that number hard coded again. So yeah, that is it. Now, if I try to run it, let's say, oops, npm start, you will actually see that we get the log of this dot name say hi and 21 printed as well because we are logging it right here. So just, let's not just log it right here and let's just try something here. So this is essentially what we call a factory decorator and they might be useful because you might want to pass in some arguments. Uh, now, again, there's something quite, uh, I have seen like people use it all the time and that is to wrap one more function out of side of it, but that really isn't sort of a useful trick, but let's just ignore it for a while and probably I'll be coming into the future. Now let's talk about this any here. So this is uh, actually is used in the TypeScript documentation as well. They prefer using any, but there are several things that you can use. Some, some people like using functions, uh, but you can see the function won't accept here because that really isn't sort of a thing, but I do think object does work. People quite a lot I have seen use object, uh, but I prefer using any because uh, just in case if you're wondering like why any, why not object? And the reason is well, this target could be anything, right? I could, the target could be this method, the target could be this property, it could be anything literally. It, it's not an object. Now you might be thinking, but why does, if I move this up here and if I make this as an object, still accept it, right? Like that, it's still accept it, throws no error. And why might that be? Well. Uh, it's the paradigm of how JavaScript works, right? JavaScript, everything in JavaScript is an object after all. So there's literally no issue in not using object here, but it's completely up to you. Uh, again, I would say, I would suggest like use object if you want to. I mean, that would provide you some type checking. Uh, other than that, I prefer using any, uh, but any doesn't provide you any type checking. Well, let's, let's just go with object as well. I mean, it does provide you with some type checking. So these are decorators in general. I will be coming up with a bit more videos, uh, like going into a bit more depth, but I want to make sure that these videos are short. I don't think this was short though, but I still want to make sure that they are short, quite easy to digest and all that sort of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stick around for the next one.